I'll never forget the Sunday sitting right down there where Brian, my son, was, happened to be leading in worship that Sunday. He may have played two chords. I've always said it was one, but something happened on that second chord where he filled the room and we didn't get to our first song for 40 minutes. In the manifest presence of the King of glory, suddenly there's only one thing on your mind. It's what I was born for. I, I was born for this seamless interaction between the King of glory who has made me qualified because I could never qualify myself. I have been strangely apprehended again for something that's way bigger than us. I love us, but this one's bigger than us. This one's bigger than us. I remember that one Sunday morning where Brian hit, I think it was the second chord, and, and he just, I don't know how to describe it. You know, it's afterwards. In the moment, you don't know what to do, you know. Afterwards, you look back and go, man, he just walked into the room. And that was that kind of a moment. I'll, I'll never forget that. We, we've only had that happen on that level one time in 25 years. But I, I remember a Sunday night where the worship team was playing, and there, another one of those moments where the glory just came in, and everybody up here just stopped, and everybody out here just stopped. And it was almost like we were suspended in time. You know, you know how people get nervous when nothing's happening, you know, like somebody, especially in Pentecostal circles, somebody need to pray in tongues or prophesy or laugh or get out and dance or do something. You know, it's like we, we get nervous with blank spaces. There was no nervousness with that blank space because he filled the blank space. He, he, he just came into the blank space and all of a sudden, you didn't have to tell people, turn your affection to him. It's just, there was just silence. I don't remember ever hearing silence for that long in a, in a crowd that likes to make noise. It was like the ultimate offering was just to shut up, but yet nobody said or suggested. It was just, it's what you do when he enters the room. You find everything that you could think of to say is completely meaningless. And I'm hungry for that again. I've had tastes in the last 10 days or so at levels, measures that I've not had for a while. And it tells me that we're being set up and it's gonna be good but it won't be about you and it won't be about me. He has set something in motion and he wants us to see that he was absolutely serious when he said it. The glory of the latter house will be greater than the former. The context was there were people that saw the temple before it was destroyed and then rebuilt, and they remember both. And the first one, Solomon, was just incredibly glorious, and the second one wasn't near as beautiful. And so you had, you had two groups of people there. Some were laughing for joy, because look, the temple's built, and others were weeping. Man, it's nothing like it used to be. And so that prophecy was very, very specific. In, in other words, this thing that you see over here, that's not it. I'm going to do something in the earth that is going to be way more glorious than even Solomon's temple, which silenced and stunned the leaders of nations. God will do it again in his house. And that's you, and that's me. I feel like there's an, an invitation. I, I wasn't sure how to, how to label this talk, this conversation with you today, but uh, to me, I, I can't talk about it without feeling invited, without feeling compelled. Uh, dissatisfaction is a holy, holy gift. See, sometimes 
our satisfaction in the absence of revival is what prohibits revival. Is that I'm actually okay without it. Sometimes the absence of the manifest presence of the King of Glory. Sometimes my satisfaction in those moments may be the very thing that propels that glory. So here's, here's an invitation. I'd like for everybody watching to, to join me in this very, very simple prayer. God, I can't make myself suitable but I can surrender. And there are people right now watching, you don't even have a personal relationship with with the Lord Jesus Christ, and this is the most unusual message ever to invite you into the family, but I'm gonna do it anyway. In this moment, you have this sense, some of you in your homes, there's going to be this sense of presence you've never seen before, you've never felt before, you've never realized before, but it's happening now. I had that sense early this morning that there would be this encounters with the Lord himself in your home. I love the corporate gathering, but there's, see, it was in my one-on-one stuff that helped me to realize the corporate stuff. So wherever you're at, some of you have never surrendered to Jesus. I want you to just to simply pray this prayer in, in, in the online chat room. Tell somebody what you've done. But it's just praying this prayer. God, I give you my entire life that you would be glorified. Do in me whatever pleases you, that your name would be exalted. Do in my family, in my home, that which delights your heart. See, the scripture says, the Lord speaks at one point, he says, for I'm not ashamed to be called their God. I would like everybody watching this to have the Lord shout over your actual home, the physical home that you live in, I would love to see the Lord of glory stand over your household and shout to everything that exists, I am not ashamed to be called their God. There's something about to be released in the earth. And it's through surrendered people. So Father, we pray right now, I ask that you would use this overwhelming sense of presence and that you disciple us this way. You teach us this way, that we would never be satisfied with anything less than you again. Like Moses, we want to say, if you're not taking us, we don't want to go up from here. We don't want to go just blessed. We don't want to go just with favor and open doors. If you're not going, if your presence isn't that which makes us different than everyone else, then we don't want to go anywhere. So I'm praying that. I'm praying that for us, us, this tribe, this family, the Bethel family all over the world. Mark us with the glory. God, I invite you, interrupt our dream time. Teach us what you're like. Teach us. Open up new pathways of discernment and perception in our physical body, our hearts, our minds, that we just expand our ability to recognize you, the glorious one. And that somehow that would be the contagious factor, not a pandemic, not a virus, but a contagious factor called the glory of God. The glory of God has become known in the earth. That's what we want. So I invite you to do that with us as a family. And I give you thanks. Amen. Yeah, I'm so glad that you uh, watched this video. I do pray that it's a great, great strength and encouragement to you. And I've got a verse that really is my cry for all of us. And it's uh, Psalms 20, it's verse 4. May he grant you your heart's desire and fulfill all your plans. That's my prayer. That's my prayer is that this would be the season of rich, rich fulfillment. Thanks for joining us.